We're going to talk ad nauseum in depth about events today for your 2023 marketing mix. And I am joined by a rock star, perfect living, walking example of how to leverage events properly in their marketing, Mr. Dave Archuleta. Fundamentally, the job of marketing is to help position your brand as an agent, as a team in your local marketplace on the consideration set of buyers and sellers in your local community. A lot of people look at marketing and think, oh, it's way too technical. It's too much work involved. And I'll be honest, there's a lot of marketing that is technical, but there's some marketing that it's so good and it's so easy and it's such low hanging fruit that it's like you don't even know it's marketing at all. And so today we're going to have a conversation about event based marketing that's actually fun marketing. I actually think all marketing is fun, but go with me on my point. I'm trying to make event-based marketing that is so embedded into how you do life with the people in your local community. Yet at the same time, they'll be coming to you as their buyer's agent, as their listing agent, as their agent of choice. We're going to talk ad nauseum in depth about events today for your 2023 marketing mix. And I am joined by a rock star, perfect living, walking example of how to leverage events properly in their marketing, Mr. Dave Archuleta. Dave, thank you so much for coming on the show. We are super happy to have you. Thank you so much for having me, Chase. Um, yeah. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, it's going to be a blast. Okay. So for those watching who don't know the wonderful Dave Archuleta, can you give us kind of the backstory and context of your business? Yes. Uh, my name is Dave Archuleta. I, I'm actually a farmer out in Rancho Mission Viejo, California, which is out in South Orange County. Uh, I kind of consider it the last city of Orange County. We're technically not a city yet, but uh, you know, we've got about 15,000 homes coming in the future and uh, we will be our own city one day. So that is my business where I'm at. Uh, I work alongside my wife, Julia Archuleta, um, who keeps me and the family all together in one piece. And what else do you want to know, Jason? All right. So I want to know, um, cause I know the backstory and I want them to, how long have you been selling real estate yourself? Uh, myself, I, I will be my third year uh, in January of next year. Okay. And, and then how about your wife? How about her? My wife has been doing it almost 14 years. Okay. Um, and then, so you transitioned in and kind of talk about that, like transition and how that all went down. Yeah. You know, we have five kids and before I had my license, uh, we were found out we were having our fifth. And so I could see how stressed my wife was trying to handle all the kids, me working another job and her trying to run a business. So I said, you know what, why don't I get my license and see if I like it and maybe I get help. And so I did it. I got my license and I did one weekend of an open house and I, I loved it. And I, I th said, this is for me. I want to try this. Uh, so I did it yeah. part time for a couple of months and then I just went all in uh, January of 2020 and then COVID happened. <laughs> yeah. And then, but then your business exploded. And so you've already described the marketplace. It's sort yeah. of a not city, but one day we're going to be a city in Orange County mm -hmm. kind of a situation. Uh, I've been to this area. It's a super cool area. Really, yeah. really awesome spot to live. Um, how many homes or what kind of a business are you all doing in that area? Just give us some production context. All right. So 2019, we did about 12 million. And then I came on, started helping my wife. We did 44 million. And then the following year, almost 48, 50 million. And okay. we've kind of slowly transitioned to where my wife has kind of taken full time with the kiddos because um, she just wants to do that. And I want her to yeah. do that. And yeah. so this year I've been on my own and I'm on track to do 80 million. And yeah, it's nuts. It is nuts. And the other thing that really stands out about your business is I find this is the case in a lot of California markets where you can be in like different kinds of markets across America and you'll find agents who are doing a hundred, 200 sales and you have those high unit numbers. Mm -hmm. I don't see as much as that, as much of that in California. Uh, but talk to us about how many units will you all close ballpark this year? Uh, I'm on track for about 75, um, yeah. which is a lot for us. So typically we do about 40 to 50. Um, yeah. You know, when you're filling out your business plan, like last year, I remember filling it out in a loom and, you know, you see all the sellers you need, all the buyers you need, all the, you know, your re sure. where they're going to be coming from. And then I tallied them all up and I was like, wow, that's 71. That's, that's almost impossible. And yeah. here we are. I've, I'm, I've almost reached that. I've already reached my goal in sales, which is, is just unbelievable to me. 
I'm just incredibly grateful. And, you know, it's because I follow everything that you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> well, today we're going to tell some extra stuff that we haven't told everybody else yet. Uh, so talk to us about your event strategy. And I'm going to kind of try to set this up. And I don't have formal questions to ask you. I just want to have a conversation yeah. because I think what you all are doing with your event strategy is like the new blueprint for how mm. folks who are farmers, as you put it, I know yeah. people are going to watch our call and be like, what do you mean a farmer? Like <laughs> you plant seeds and stuff like a geographic <laughs> farmer in your marketing. Uh, I think you're going to be giving people sort of the blueprint of what that looks like going forward. So kind of walk us through Let's start with what your event strategy is today. And then I want to go back to how it started. So sure. let's see how it's going, how it started. Okay. Well, first off, I, I only do events that really match my values of who I am as a brand. Um, so my, my events aren't very, uh, you know, I don't just do them to do them. They have purpose behind them uh, because it matches who I am as a person and that matches who my business is. So uh, right now I've got, a softball club that's co-ed that's in my farm and it's anyone that wants to sign up. Uh, we meet every single Tuesday night. So I'm always in front of them every Tuesday night. I play in every single game. I'm there at every single game um, talking with people that watch the games. Um, Are you any good? <laughs> I'm not as good as the broke agent, but uh <laughs> 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 exactly. Uh, okay. So every Tuesday night, you're holding a, a softball game. Every, every Tuesday so, night, we start at six o'clock. We usually end around nine 30. Uh, so that's my commitment to that. Uh, it's honestly one of my favorite night of the weeks. And I, you'll hear that from so many people in the league that that's their favorite night of the week. Uh, Cause we just get to get out, have fun. It's competitive uh, within certain limits and boundaries. Yeah. <laughs> So it's great because all the families come out, all the kiddos come out. There's a playground there. Uh, I always bring candy for the kids. We always got music pumping. Uh, you know, last night we had our championship game. So I had my best eighties music playing. So we had, you know, all the hits spice girls were in there. They're not eighties. <laughs> I know, <laughs> okay. but you know, it, it was, it's fun music and it gets people laughing and having a good time. Uh, while we get to play. So it's yeah. funny because when it's not there, when the batteries die, because sometimes that happens, yeah. you know, everyone's bummed. Where's the music? So, so, so I've heard you describe this club before and I'm like, I want to live in a place like that. It yeah. honestly sounds like just a super fun connected place where people bond and make friendships. And, you know, real estate is a relationship business. It's mm -hmm. a know you like you trust you kind of business. We tout that message over and over and over again. And so when I look at your event strategy, which I want to get to what the proof is in the pudding, I want to get to the numbers and what are the yeah. results of this, but I want to prime and frame it through the lens of if you're building community with people, if you're building relationships with people, it's sort of like field of dreams and you're Kevin Costner. If you build it, they will come. Yeah. If you create the infrastructure that fosters that kind of community, it's mm -hmm. going to lead to deals. It's going to lead to sales. So just for those watching who are like, Ugh, how does playing softball get me deals? Tell them what it's done for your business. Okay. So in the nine months to a year, I've done 25 plus transactions just from softball. Okay. Um, you know, and this is pretty awesome. That um, is pretty awesome. And it didn't really cost me anything except my time. But at, at the same time, I'm doing something that I really like, you know, so if it, if it wasn't happened to be business related, I'd probably still be doing it. Right. Yeah. So yeah. that's what I think is special about the events that I do. I do things that I'm passionate about. Um, you know, like I got another club, it's, it's called the ranch cellar and it's a wine tasting club. And, you know, my wife has an agricultural business background, so she knows everything about wine. And to me, I think wine tastes purple. You know? <laughs> I was going to ask you, I was like, do you even like wine? I, I, I knew don't. the answer. <laughs> That's, and I and I really want to because I have so many clients that love it. My wife loves it. Everyone in my family loves it. Uh, but I think wine tastes purple or if it's white or gold, I think it tastes bronze or gold. You know, that's my description of wine. And that's kind of been the catchphrase of the club. Whether you think wine tastes purple or you're a wine connoisseur, come and hang out with us. You know, wine and it's tastes like... <laughs> <aubergine>. <laughs> But you know what's so cool is that 
I every month I have four hours because we meet from six to 10 with about 80 to 90 people that live in my farm. And we're all stuck in this events room uh, at our local restaurant that we get to go and support. And they provide us appetizers, five wines or three beers if you don't like wine. So it's a really cool time to connect with people. And what I find is that what I really love is that people are connecting with other people. So when like last, we had one last weekend and I think it was like 22 people have never been to this event. Mm -hmm. All right. About 10 of them just moved into the community. Didn't know anybody. So Mm -hmm. here they are being able to connect with people on their street or in their, in their neighborhood. Uh, Maybe they have the same age kids. And now they've got these connections because they just spent four hours hanging out, talking with their new friends. So one of the cool things, Dave, it sounds like your community has really taken the idea that you started and made it their own. How are they all contributing to the experience? So it's not just all on your shoulder, so to speak. Yeah, no, great question. So for example, the softball club, uh, there's so many people that uh, say, hey, would it be cool if I bring my cotton candy machine, popcorn machine, and maybe bring some pizzas and we'll just invite everybody to bring their kiddos. Um, you know, I love that because yeah. it's it's not me doing it. It's everyone just organically just wanting to do it because they see the value of connecting people. And, you know, uh, uh, we had a championship game last season. Uh, we did a potluck. Everybody brought stuff. Every team was in charge of certain things. And I just love that kind of stuff. So like we just ended our, our season last night and, uh, you know, in a couple of weeks, we're going to be doing an, uh, you know, a, an event at the brewery uh, that's in our farm. Um, and that'll be really cool. We'll have food trucks and, uh, you know, everyone will bring the kiddos and just, you know, hang out. So those yeah. are the kind of things that I, I just love. It just makes my job so much more fun and fulfilling. And uh, yeah. Dude, it sounds like a party is what it sounds like. <laughs> It's good times. What inspired this idea for you guys? um, You know, softball kind of just started because COVID was happening, right? Yeah. Um, And my wife has a tennis club and she just loves tennis and she plays all the time. (laughs) Hmm. So I was jealous. I'm like, well, I want a club. I want to do something where I can go out and have a night away, uh, like for my night, you know? So I said, I'm going to start a softball club. And, you know, my wife's like, you don't know anything about starting a club. And I was like, you're right. I don't, but I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> and so I did, I'm curious, you know? So the tennis club, did you, is the tennis club recreational or was that also used for pseudo business purposes? No, Julia just started it because she wanted to play tennis. Just uh, for tennis. And naturally it turned into friendships. It turned into, you know, helping people buy and sell homes. Yeah. So, and then you did it with softball, but... Candidly, the league seems like it's exploded because honestly, more people can play softball than can play tennis. Yeah. And so there's a huge opportunity for connection. So what's the, you might've already mentioned this. How many people are participating? So we got about 200 people. Uh, Right now we got nine teams. I put about 20 people on each team because not everyone can be there every week. Yeah. Um, Typically there's about 12, 13 players each week. Um, But what, what is really special about it? And, you know, I, I love connecting people and helping people feel welcomed, loved and valued. And I really wanted the teams to be like orchestrated by the street that they live on, the Mm -hmm. community they live in, because we've got different communities within the big community. Right. So um, I was able to structure all the teams that way. No one knew that until they're playing with their team. And the third weekend, they're like, so what street do you live on? And winner's court. You know, they're like, they, wait, that's the street I live on. We're neighbors, <laughs> you know? So that's how it like really organically just happened. Where now I'd be driving around on the weekends, putting up my open house signs. And I see people hanging out together, playing softball with their kids and their kids. And I thought, how cool was it that I got to be a part of something like that, that are yeah. making those lifelong connections with people. And, you know, they all have uniforms. They all have team names. I didn't come up with that. They did that all organically. And, you know, it's it's been turned into something really special. 
Yeah, so. I think the I think the grander principle here is again just remember this is relationship business. Mm -hmm. The house people live in, it's where they do life, it's where they do community. And so if you can put yourself in a position to be the connector of those relationships, this is where I think a lot of agents they don't see marketing for what it is. Marketing is yeah. just a neutral term. Marketing could mm -hmm. be digital marketing, it could be super technical, or it could be super relational. It is what you make it to be. Mm -hmm. And so I think like the reason I wanted to invite you onto this show and talk about it is because I just think what you're doing is awesome. I think it celebrates the right values. It brings people closer together and it works for your business. Um, talk to folks about some of the logistics. If they wanted to start their own league or their own recurring events, what are some of the lessons you've learned over time that you would say like, hey, don't do this or make sure you do this? <laughs> Well, first off, it's a lot of work. It's not easy, but I knew that going in. But what I did is I, I relied on people that have done this before. So I called every softball club person that I knew uh, all in Orange County. I found out, you know, because I had to have rules. I had to have regulations for the HOA uh, to yeah. be able to put the club in there because they're asking me, what's your what's your rules? What's the writer? And I was like, I, I don't know. <laughs> so. I literally had to figure that out. And, um, you know, so I called on so many people, uh, so many people were willing to help. So I think uh, if you're going to be starting a club like this, it's always how can you involve other people to help you? So you're not just doing it alone. So, yeah. you know, I know there's people in my community that uh, do this all the time. They play Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays in different cities around here. So, you know, those are my first calls and those guys really helped me figure this all out. And then it was my creative craziness that, well, what if we did it like this, you know? So. Yeah. Um, okay. So this next question is kind of a trick question on purpose. How do you ask them for business? I Wink. don't. Say that again. I don't. All right. I have never yep. once said I'm a realtor. I've never said, sell your house with me. People just naturally come up to me and say, hey, I really like what you're doing for softballers. That's our club name. And creative, I, you know, I like what I like what how you're bringing people together and how it, that gives back to the community. And yeah. if that's how you run your business. I want to I want you to work with me. So yeah. I think yeah. that's the best compliment I could ever get as someone that's in sales and an agent, you know, is I don't know, because yeah. I. I don't ever want to force myself on, you know, trying to sell or force people to work with me, like work with me because you want to work with me and I'll work with you because I want to work with you. Right. Yeah. Fundamentally, you know? that's the correct answer. And I think, again, yeah. this is a relationship business and you've got to put a certain level of faith into the idea that if I genuinely and earnestly try to build relationships with people, the natural response will eventually be, they will repeat and refer business with me. And in fact, That's the right. statistics support you. We know statistically speaking, if you look at the National Association of Realtors data that they produce annually, we know that last year or in, actually this year, 2022, for example, listings, 63% of sellers found an agent by way of either repeat or referral business. And so mm -hmm. I say that to reinforce this idea that, look, people are gonna do business with agents they know, like, and trust. So the question yeah. is, how are you putting yourself on the radar as the person that they check, no, check, like, check, trust? And I think your event strategy is fantastic. Okay, one last you know, question. Wait, before you go on, because yeah. I, I was thinking about this earlier, like, I think sometimes as agents, we, we put such a focus on we sell and buy homes and that's what we do. But I think my strategy is kind of reverse of I connect people and I make people feel welcomed and and loved and in return that helps me sell and buy homes bingo think, you know that's really been my focus in everything that i'm doing and i think if as long as i keep doing that and it comes across more authentic it builds way more trust uh, 100 the right? former of what you described is a salesperson the latter of mm -hmm. what you described is a knowledge broker is a confidant, is an advisor, a trusted local advisor, whatever, whatever lang language we want to use to describe it. Yeah. It's a different thing and it's the winning combination uh, in, in this kind of an industry. So talk to us about like, what's the next iteration or next chapter of where you're taking this next? Okay. So I, uh, I got a new event that I'm doing in December. <laughs> I, so I, I'm, I'm really big on branding and, and having cool names. Because I think cool names make it 
give it a little bit more legitness to it, if that's even a word. <laughs> legitness. Uh, you know, like my softball club is called RMV Softballers. And uh, my wine tasting is, you know, the catchphrase is, you know, I think wine tastes purple. Um, so for this Christmas event, I'm calling it uh, Get Elfed Up for Charity. And mm. it's going to be a toy drive uh, in Christmas season. And yeah. I want to have an 80s cover band and everyone's going to dress up like elves. And, uh, you know, everyone's going to bring a toy uh, that we give to Toys for Tots. So yeah. I'm really excited about it. I've heard, you know, I just started promoting uh, last week and, you know, we've already got a hundred and something tickets sold. So um, awesome. we're expecting 600 people. So it's going to be fun. Uh, cool. Is your 80s cover band going to cover Spice Girls? Haha. <laughs> just kidding. I, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> Dude, they're a '90s group. I know, <laughs> but it still kind of sounds like the '80s. <laughs> um, okay, touche. I'll grant you that. Okay, um, I I hope everybody who's been watching and listening to this episode's getting inspired about what could you do in your local marketplace to be mm -hmm. the connector, to be the person who fosters relationship. Everybody wants to be in community. Everybody wants to belong. And we talk all the time with agents about being the digital mayor, being that trusted local advisor. And I look at events as just a fundamental way to foster those relationships. And I think the way you're doing it, Dave, is mm -hmm. absolutely rock solid. Uh, tell the good people where they can connect with you. Connect with me on Instagram, the underscore Archuleta underscore team. And there you will be able to connect with us everywhere else on social media. Our website, thearchuletateam.com. We'd love to hear from you guys. DM me if you got questions about a club, softball club, anything that you guys are doing. I would love ideas. Uh, there's nothing else I would I'd love to do more is more events. So send me some ideas. <laughs> All right. I love it. Uh, good stuff. I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments here on YouTube or wherever you're watching or listening. We want to know what you think. What are your ideas? Let's get a really good brainstorm going in the thread. And until next week, this is This Week in Marketing. <laughs>